So in this video, I'm gonna walk you through my six favorite 5-0 pickleball strategies that will massively improve your pickleball game. After this, I can guarantee that you will think differently about the way that you approach a match and play pickleball. By the way, I'm Austin, I'm a 5.0 plus player, and I think about this stuff all the time. Let's open the playbook. Strategy number one is to stop speeding up the ball to win the point. Remember that the speed up is a setup shot. So as soon as you hit your speed up, you're gonna be countering that next shot 90% of the time. Very rarely, if ever, is it actually a winner off of the speed up. And here's a really easy tip to make your speed up super simple so that you're ready for that ball to come back. And that is to hit a windshield wiper speed up. So I'm gonna be teaching you how to do that right now. But in essence, it's just a really simplified speed up. Your typical speed up, you kind of have a backswing and you kind of have a big motion. With the windshield wiper speed up, you're just simply doing this and your paddle's gonna finish out in front of you. You don't have a backswing, everything's staying out in front of you. So this is the technique behind it. You're gonna start with your paddle low as if you're dinking the ball. Remember, whenever you're dinking, your paddle's gonna be open towards wherever that is. So make sure that it's not closed. This kind of projects that you're gonna speed up the ball. Whenever this happens, they're gonna be ready to counter that ball. It's not gonna be as effective of a speed up. So what you wanna do is open it as if you're about to dink the ball, and then you're gonna go outwards and upwards as you create this windshield wiper motion, hence the name windshield wiper speed up. So I'm low and I have that paddle face open. I go outwards, upwards, and then I create a windshield wiper and I wanna act like I'm taking water off of that windshield glass. Most important thing is that I'm finishing right here out in front of me with my paddle tip pointing towards where I just sped the ball up to. This puts your paddle in ready position, which is the optimal position so that you can counter that next shot. So again, I'm here outwards, upwards, windshield wiper. And what that looks like is this. It's the same exact thing on the backhand side. If you're using one hand, you start low, you go outwards, upwards with that windshield wiper, finish with your paddle out in front of you, finishing here, and that way you can counter on either the forehand or the backhand side. Same exact thing with two hands. You're gonna let that non-dominant arm take over. Remember, outwards, upwards, and create that windshield wiper, finish out in front of you, don't finish over here like how you would for a ground stroke. This motion needs to be extremely short and concise so that you're ready for that next ball to come back. I'm here, outwards and upwards, next ball is coming back, and I can easily counter that ball because I'm in a good foundational ready position. So be ready for your speed ups to come back and I can guarantee that you're gonna win more points. Before we hop into the next strategy, I wanted to let you guys know that we are doing a Christmas special for the next month where you can get 20% off the Pickleball Drills app. The Pickleball Drills app has hundreds of drills and trainings taught by the pros. So if you're someone that wants to improve your pickleball game, be sure to join and access your seven day free trial and use code PLAYBOOK for 20% off your first month. Now back to the video. Strategy number two is to point your paddle tip towards wherever you hit the ball. This is a hack that will do two things to make your hand speed faster. First, it will make sure that you stay in your ready position because whenever the tip of your paddle is pointing towards where the ball just went, you're gonna be in the most optimal position to counter that next shot. A lot of players without realizing will actually put their paddle down by their side after hitting each shot. And the reason that this is bad is because you're gonna be late getting to that next shot, especially if your opponents speed up the ball. The second thing that it does is it makes your opponents feel like you're reading their mind. And here's a point to demonstrate what I mean. So in this point, we're both on the left side of the court and we're in a cross court dinking exchange. As soon as I hit every single dink, my paddle tip is pointing towards where I just hit the ball to. What this is doing is it's opening my paddle face towards my forehand side. My opponent has two options when speeding up the ball in this cross court dinking exchange. They can either speed it up down the line or they can speed it up up the middle. The reason that they can't speed it up cross court is because they'd hit the ball out. They can only dink cross court because they don't have enough court to work with. So if I were to dink these balls instead and just keep my paddle open towards the backhand side, I'm not doing myself any favors because I'm gonna be late getting to my forehand side, which is the only place that they can actually speed up the ball, which is gonna be that up the middle shot. And it's the same exact thing if you're dinking forehand to forehand. If you point that paddle tip towards your opponents, it's now gonna be open towards that backhand side of your paddle. So then you can cover that middle counter if they choose to speed up the ball. Your partner is gonna be covering the speed up up the line. And again, if they speed it up cross court, that ball has to go out. So try that and literally everybody that you play with will think that you have crazy fast hands when in reality, all that you're doing is pointing the tip of your paddle wherever the ball went. Strategy number three is to always hit to the better player in rec and the weaker player in tournaments. Now I want you to think about the last time that you played in a rec match. Was your focus to win and just to hit to the weaker player or was your focus to get a little bit better 
and hit to the stronger player. Chances are your strategy was to win, and so you probably hit majority of shots to the weaker player on the court. And maybe you even talked to your partner and said, hey, let's hit to the weaker player and we can win this match. But you don't want to think that way. What you want to think is, how can I win actual tournaments, the matches that actually matter? One of the best ways to get better, and this is what 5-0s do all the time, is they'll play with professional players and they'll play with better players so that they, as a result, can get better. So I always suggest to everybody that you hit to the better player when you're playing in rec. That way you become a better player as a result until you become the best player on the court. Once you've done this, you're gonna start winning more tournaments and your level's gonna go way up. Now, when we get into that actual tournament, obviously the best strategy is to hit to the weaker player and then you can kind of work your guys' game plan around that. So hit to the better player in rec and if you feel like you can't find better players to play with, it's probably because you've been hitting to the weaker player whenever you've had that opportunity. So the next time that you get the opportunity to play with a better player, hit every shot to them and they're gonna to wanna to play with you again and again and again. The next strategy that 5-0s use is that they will drive the ball whenever they're in a defensive position and they'll drop the ball whenever they're in an offensive position. A huge mistake that amateur players make all the time is that they will drive balls just because they're short in the court. But the reason that they feel like they should drive these shots is because they have an opportunity to be offensive. But the best way to be offensive is actually with a drop. Because in case you haven't noticed yet, you lose 90% of those points because since you're driving this shot from this position, your opponents are standing at the net in a more optimal position, they just simply hit that ball back at your feet and it comes faster because you drove the ball rather than actually dropped the ball. If you took away one strategy from this video and applied it, this would be the exact strategy that I would ask you to apply to get to that 5-0 level. And it's a super simple formula. You don't have to worry about doing any math like A equals MC squared minus C, whatever it might be. It's super simple. All that it comes down to is two things, the height of the ball and the depth of the ball. If the return comes in short, you're gonna drop that ball majority of the time unless it is extremely high. By extremely high, I mean it's above the net tape where it's bouncing. That way you have the opportunity to drive the ball downwards so that they can't just easily counter that ball back at your feet. So if it's short and very high above the net, you can drive the ball. Other than that, if it's short, drop the ball. I know that that sounds crazy to a lot of you, but you'll win so many more points and probably you don't realize that you just have so many points instantly finished by driving the ball. If you don't, chances are it's because you're playing with players that aren't at your level. You're way ahead of where they are, so you need to start challenging yourself and playing with better players. Now, just like how I said before, if the ball lands deep in the court, you wanna drive that ball majority of the time. And the reason that you wanna drive that ball is because you're in a defensive position. And so by hitting that drive, it gives you an opportunity to get an easier shot from your opponents. Probably a shot that's gonna land shorter than mid court that you can then come in and drop. So you're hitting that drive deep so that you can set up a short drop so that you can get to a more optimal position up at the net where all things are equal and neutral. Now with this particular position, I don't recommend dropping the ball when you're in a defensive position and you're leaning back. It's really just not gonna work out that well. I recommend driving the ball. You're gonna put the ball on your opponents quicker. So where should you hit that ball majority of the time so that you have the best chance of making it up to the net with an easy fifth shot? You should drive that ball majority of the time at the player that just returned the shot. And the reason for that is because they're running forward and so they're not gonna be in an optimal position like their partner is who's already gonna be sitting on the kitchen line ready to counterattack that ball. So if the ball is deep, remember to drive that shot majority of the time at the returner. If the ball is short in the court, drop the ball majority of the time. Just because it's short doesn't mean that you should speed up the ball. You're gonna get countered, it's gonna come right back at your feet, and you're gonna lose the vast majority of points. Number five is that speed ups work in a triangular pattern. And the way that I like to think about this is thinking about Newton's third law, I think it's the third law of motion, which is with every action there is an opposite and equal reaction. So whenever we hit a shot in a particular direction, it's gonna come back in the opposite or equal direction depending on the angle at which we hit that shot. So that's probably super confusing, so I'm gonna break it down for you right now. So in this point, the player speeds up the ball directly at the player in front of them. And that player in front of them counters the ball directly back to them. So this would be an example of an equal reaction. If you speed up straight and don't give your opponents any angles, that ball is gonna come straight back to you. Now check out this point. For this one, the opponent speeds up the ball cross court, kind of up the middle. That next shot is then coming at the opponent's partner. It's creating this triangle effect. So this would be an example of the ball going in the opposite direction. So if you speed up a ball down the line directly in front of you, the ball is gonna come back directly to you. 
if you speed up a ball cross court, it's gonna come back directly to your partner. This is why it's widely recommended to not speed up a ball cross court because that's gonna automatically put that counter back on your partner who's probably not gonna be ready for that ball to come back. And also that opponent is gonna have more time to react whenever you speed up cross court because it's gonna take a longer time to get to them than it would if you sped up to the opponent directly in front of you. So remember for every action, if I speed up the ball directly up the line and I don't give my opponents any angles, I'm gonna get the same reaction. And if I speed the ball up cross court, I'm gonna get an opposite reaction. So this can really help when you're either speeding up the ball or you're in the middle of a hands battle because if you speed up from this side of your body and hit it to that side of their body, even if they're directly in front of you, they're gonna have that opposite reaction because you're giving them a little bit of angle. So when you speed up the shot, you're now gonna be ready for a backhand counter to hit that next shot because it's gonna come in that opposite direction. It's the same exact thing if you speed it up directly down the line at them, be ready for it to come back to your forehand. This will also make your opponents feel like you're reading their mind, which is really cool. And that gives us the perfect leeway into strategy number six, which is one of my personal favorites, and that is that it's okay to speed up cross court. Five O's do it all the time, so long as you're doing one of these three things. Number one is if the ball is near the sideline. When the ball's near the sideline, you have tons of angles to work with and tons of options on where you could speed up the ball. You could either hit a crazy dink way out wide and pull your opponents off the court, you could speed up down the line, or you could speed up up the middle slash cross court. And so this gives you a good opportunity to speed up that ball cross court so long as your opponents are pulled off the court. So check out this point. We have a dink battle going on cross court and we're slowly pulling each other off of the court. As soon as I see a sideline ball that I can speed up, I speed up that ball up the middle. My opponents aren't ready for that shot since they're so far pulled off the court. So since the ball is close to the sideline, I can speed it up and get away with that cross court speed up. Number two is when the ball just barely changed direction. So if you check out this point, we go from dinking the ball cross court to then up the line. Right at that change of direction, people are gonna be out of position, pulled off the court, just like how you can see in this. So it gives a good opportunity to speed that ball up the middle slash cross court. Number three is when the gap in the middle is greater than a paddle plus an arm. So essentially what that means is you don't have to do any crazy math here, but my arm length plus the paddle. Because if that gap in the middle is greater than that, then you obviously have enough gap to fit your ball through to hit a winner. Now, even if they get to that shot, they're gonna be late getting to the shot. It's gonna cause an error majority of the time, or they're gonna hit a lucky shot and hit a winner, which you made the most optimal position. So there's really not much that you can do other than say, nice shot. So I hope that this was helpful for you guys. I know that as you apply these strategies, you will make it to the 5-0 level. Super excited to hear about your guys' successes. Leave this video a like if you enjoyed this content and watch this video right here if you wanna learn about six more strategies that will beat 99% of pickleball players.